is a push or a pull. If the pulls are equal, nothing moves. But things move when the forces become unbalanced. Often forces come from more than two directions, but the same rules apply. If the forces are balanced, nothing moves. But if one of the forces becomes weaker, things move. Apply a force to a beach ball, and what happens? Well, naturally the beach ball moves. And if you keep applying the force, the beach ball will move faster and faster. Apply an equal force to the other side, and the beach ball stops. But if one of the forces becomes stronger, then the ball moves in the direction that the stronger force is pushing it. Another thing a force can do is cause an object to move along a curved path. The athlete is applying a force to the wire, pulling the ball towards him, and this force is causing the ball to travel along a curved path. This kind of movement is somewhat similar to the movement of heavenly bodies. For example, is the earth pulling on the moon in the same way that the athlete was pulling on the iron ball? If the Earth is pulling on the moon with some kind of a force, it's a kind of force that doesn't require the two objects to be attached to each other or to be touching each other. Now there's something else that forces can do to an object. A pair of forces can change the shape of an object. Now a balloon is elastic, and when the forces stop pushing on it, it springs back to its original shape. A pair of forces can do the same thing to a sponge. A pair of forces can change the shape of the spring in this spring balance. The support holding up the spring exerts one force. The weight pulling the spring down exerts the other force. The spring, of course, is elastic. If you remove the weight, the spring returns to its former shape. Things that are elastic are useful for measuring how big a force is. Watch this. One quarter pound weight stretches the spring one inch. Two weights, two inches. Three weights, three inches, and so on. As each quarter pound weight is removed, the spring rises one inch. You can try the same sort of thing with some rubber bands looped together. Put one coat hanger on, and it stretches the chain of rubber bands a certain amount. Put on two, and it stretches more. As you add each coat hanger, will it stretch the same amount each time? Try it yourself and see. You can use a pair of forces to change the shape of a paper clip. The paper clip is elastic enough to return to its normal shape. But if the strength of the pair of forces is increased, then the paper clip is bent. It's not elastic enough to spring all the way back. There are many things that are not elastic whose shape can easily be changed by a pair of forces. When you change the shape of clay, for example, it stays that way until you use a pair of forces to change it again.
here's a man who can develop very strong pairs of forces. Watch. man is pretty big, but it would be possible for you to lift both him and his weights even if you happen to weigh only 90 pounds. Why does the 90 pounder have enough force to lift the strong man? Because she is getting help, and that help is coming from a machine. The seesaw is a machine. A machine permits you to change the direction of a force. When the girl pushes down, the machine pushes up. The machine also changes the size of her force so she can lift both the strong man and his heavy weights. Here is a machine changing the direction of a force. You push back and forth and the truck goes up. You don't have to push very hard because this machine also multiplies the force. You don't have to use very much force at all. Yet, you can lift this truck which weighs almost five tons. Here's another machine similar to the truck jack. Like the other machines you've seen, this one will multiply a small force into a very large one. Watch. You couldn't do that with one hand unless you had a machine to help you. Could you tear this log into two pieces with the force of your bare hands? Not a chance, is there? Again, you need to use machines to multiply your force. Yes, a hammer and wedge make up a machine. The impact of a moving object, like a hammer, can produce a tremendous force for the small instant of impact. This force seems to be transferred from the hammer through this wedge in two directions, because somehow a pair of forces is pushing this log apart. So it is possible to split a log this big if you have a machine to help you. An impact can transmit a force. One steel ball swings in from the right and is stopped at the point where it hits the other one. Now you know that when a moving object slows down or stops, it's because a force is acting on it, and the force in this case must have come from this direction. But at the same time, the steel ball on the left started moving. It must have felt a force in this direction. When there's an impact between the two steel balls, this one pushes the other in this direction. And at the same time, the other one must push in this direction. Here's a similar setup. The main difference is that we have substituted two permanent magnets for the steel balls. A magnetic force is just like any other force. It's a push or a pull. But unlike most of the other forces we have seen, one magnet can push another without the two magnets touching each other. A magnetic force pulls on these tacks without the magnet having to touch them either.
electricity can produce forces that act in a similar way. This is a kind of electric generator. Watch what happens to the balloons when I turn it on. Some force is pulling on the balloons. It seems to be coming from the electric generator because the balloons move in that direction. If I take away the electrical charge, the balloons are released. You know the force pulling on them is not magnetism because you can't magnetize a balloon. Later on in your study of science, you will be able to prove to yourself that it's electricity that produces the force that makes these balloons move. There's another kind of force that pulls objects together. This is the force of gravity. If you don't think that's a strong force, watch. When the weight is dropped, it is pulled toward the Earth. What about the moon? Is it being pulled toward the Earth too? Remember how the athlete exerted a force pulling in to keep an iron ball traveling along a curved path around him? We noticed that this circular movement is similar to the movement of the moon around the Earth. But we wondered about it because we couldn't see anything connecting the moon to the Earth. Well, what if there were a force pulling between them? A force of gravity. Wouldn't that explain why the moon keeps to a curved path around the Earth? Just as the iron ball keeps to a curved path around that athlete? Because we are familiar with the pull of gravity, we've been accustomed to saying what goes up must come down. But these days, some things that go up don't come down at all. The forces that push this rocket up and make it go faster and faster push so hard that the Earth's force of gravity may never pull it down again.